Yalguai. These are mutated bears. You're probably wondering, when did Yalguai first show up? Well, we don't have Yalguai in Fallout 1 and Fallout 2. They're not part of the original series. They were something that was added in the Bethesda games, starting with Fallout 3. You have just Yalguai in general, and then there's a very specific Yalguai named Ruzka, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And then in New Vegas, there are no Yalguai unless you play the Honest Hearts DLC. And then there are some variations and another very specific Yalguai. Fallout 4 has a variety of different kinds of Yalguai. And then Fallout 76 as well with another specific one, which we'll talk about later. And a Yalguai even shows up in Fallout Shelter. So these are fairly common in the modern Fallout game. So according to the Fallout 4 loading screen, originally named by the descendants of those held in Chinese internment camps before the Great War, the Yao Guai is a ferocious mutated bear. So that helps to explain the name, but it doesn't tell us everything. Why Yao Guai? It, the Yao Guai, it sounds like a, a Chinese kind of phrasing, right? Some form of uh, Chinese language. But let's get into the details in this. We have to go to Wikipedia in order to learn more about what Yao Guai means. Because we don't get an explanation for the definition of the word, at least not that I could find, the definition of the words in Fallout and why the Chinese prisoners would have used that term. So according to Wikipedia, Yao Guai is a term for monsters or strange creatures. It can also mean strange ghost or demon, or it's often translated as sprite or fairy or loosely related terms. This is something that comes across often in mythological monster type stuff. This is something that we actually talk a lot about in the Witcher lore cast with the, the bestiary episodes with the origins of some of those monsters. Oftentimes throughout history, in the history of cultures and peoples, things like well, I guess you could say the unexplained, the unexplained bump in the night kinds of stuff, the unexplained experiences you have out in the woods by yourself that you can't quite put a finger on are usually related to some sort of fairy or some sort of spirit or some sort of ghost. And oftentimes throughout history have been related to all of those things because they're unexplainable they're, They can't really figure out what it is. So in this sense, Yao Guai simply means unexplained monster really is it a demon is it a ghost is it a spirit is it a fairy they don't know so they call it a yao guai the etymology of the word yao guai is a compound word consisting of two chinese characters is a noun meaning monster or demon and means strange or unusual when used as an adjective so a monster or demon would be strange and unusual so therefore that is a strange that is a yao guai hat you're wearing it's a very strange and unusual hat um, and monster or unusual creature as a noun. Each word individually signifies or connotates strangeness. So it's actually like Yao and Guai both meaning strange. That makes sense. So Yao is the is the monster demon and Guai is the strange and unusual. But monsters and demons are by their nature strange and unusual, if that makes sense. Classic usage of both terms relate to preternatural phenomena and freakish occurrences, 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 where explanation fell outside the limited understanding of those observing them. These include freakish vegetation, eerie sounds, the unnatural onset of fog and darkness, as well as a sudden loss in verbal fluency. Man, I suffer from that all the time. Or inability to express oneself. Yao are blamed for sudden outbreaks or confused and erratic action or transgressive behavior. With one saying being that, quote, when affairs go awry, there must have been a Yao acting. Yao Guai would have, re <laughs> would have rhymed, but it, that's not what this says. I thought it was gonna be like a little poem. Um, in later terminology, Yao refers to natural objects, animals, plants, and rocks, which have acquired sentience, spiritual awareness. The ability to assume human or near human forms, supernatural or magical powers, as well as the ability to cultivate so as to achieve immortality or transcendence. That's that's an interesting point, as we're going to talk about with one of these specific Yao Guai that we're, we're going to mention. 
Um, it goes on. There's a bunch of other stuff in here, and there's some other uh, stuff about the mythology and the history of it. But you guys get this sense of where this comes from and why the Chinese soldiers in internment camps would see a creature like this and potentially call it a Yao Guai. It's strange. It, if it walks on its hind legs, it could even be a little bit more human-like, potentially. It might look like it has sentience, because bears can be smart. They can do things that seemingly people can do sometimes, like figure out how to open doors and stuff. It makes sense. This, is, this seems like a good explanation for that. So here, real quick, we're going to go through all the different variations in which games they're in. And then in the second half of the episode, we're going to dig into some very specific versions of Yao Guai or, or ones with names. The ones that show up in the games is more prominent characters, I guess you could say. So in Fallout 3, we all only have Yao Guai and Rezka, the specific one. In Honest Hearts, there's Yao Guai, Yao Guai Cubs. So you get you get the babies. Giant Yao Guai and Ghost of Shi. That's the other specific one. Then in Fallout 4, we have a bunch. Yao Guai, Stunted Yao Guai, Shaggy Yao Guai, Glowing, Albino, Rabid, Dusky, Yao Guai Ghouls, Irradiated Yao Guai, and the Pack Yao Guai. In Fallout 76, we have regular Yao Guai, Yao Guai Ghouls, Irradiated, Stunted, Shaggy, Albino, Rabid, Glowing, Scorched, because Fallout 76, the Scorched disease kind of affects everything, Dusky, Savage, Frenzied, Prime, and Fluffy, and Son of Fluffy. Again, very specifically named ones that show up in Fallout 76 this time. And then in Fallout Shelter, we just have Yao Guai. So, you're probably wondering, there's irradiated ones, there are ghouls, there are scorched. How did the Yao Guai come into being? Well, we don't exactly know. They seem to be mutated bears. We don't have any record of them being specifically created like the death claws or a product of FEV mutation and they don't look like other things that were products of FEV mutation. So really they just look like an animal that survived the radiation and mutated and continue to proliferate. They have cubs, they are young, they can survive in the wasteland, they are bigger and stronger and more scary than regular bears, and they descended from black bears, which are actually the smallest of the bears in North America. Brown bears are bigger, polar bears are even bigger, and yet these creatures are larger than a common black bear. So the mutations they went through in the wasteland in dealing with the radiation made them larger, made them more capable. In fact, their arms seem more just stronger. They seem a little bit more, I don't know, again, like evolved into something else, kind of uh, maybe even more gorilla like in a way or less of a bear, more of a creature that uses its front paws. I don't know. I mean, bears do use their front paws, but the shape is different. If you get what I'm saying, the arms appear longer and more muscular, more, more simian like, more person like. And we don't have any other explanation for where they came from other than they, they just mutated, which means if they continue to mutate, then they can ghoulify because it seems to be something that happens to certain kinds of creatures when they've experienced enough radiation. And if they ghoulify, then some of them can be around for who knows how long the uh, the details of ghouls seem to apply here. And they can also get the scorch plague. So there's different variations with that as well. Now, one thing to point out is that the the general shape of the creatures in the different games does seem to change. The Fallout 3 Yagwai is more like what I was describing with the longer front limbs and things like that. But by the time you get to Fallout 4, these creatures appear more bear-like in their stance, but their bodies appear larger and their faces appear more more severe. At least that would be my description of it. Almost like uh like they, they almost have like a hyena kind of stance to the to the bump on in the back side of their body. And of course many of these animals are lacking hair and look like they're wounded or infected or irradiated and their skin is open in certain locations. Of course they suffer from all these, you know, wonderful wonderful grossness details. <laughs> Grossness details. All right, here we go. Let's talk about some of these very specific Yao Guai. First, we have Ruzka. 
Ruzka, such a good name. Fallout 3, Ruzka. Ruzka is a unique Yaogwai living in the far northwest corner of Point Lookout in 2277. So only in the Point Lookout DLC. Ruzka is the only Yaogwai that inhabits Point Lookout. So there are no other Yaogwai in this area. If you come across one, it is Ruzka. It has that weird longer front legs thing and some very shiny white eyes. Posters of Ruzka can be spotted scattered around Point Lookout, suggesting that she was a pre-war circus attraction. So this is what I was talking about with the mutations. Some of them appear to be mutated, some of them appear to be mutated to the point of ghoulification, and Ruzka has a very specific situation here. Ruzka has been around for 200 years, so what's the deal? Well, unlike regular Yaogwai, which evolved from black bears, Ruzka seems to have evolved from a brown bear. Now completely feral and ghoulified, Ruzka amuses herself by playing with a big red ball and the entrails of encroaching swamp folk. She lives in a small alcove at the end of a small inlet channel nearby the jet crash site and the sacred bog. She is dangerous and threatening unless one has the animal friend perk. So you can still be friends with her, even though she's this crazy, gigantic, ghoulified brown bear. Pretty awesome. So there are some quirks about this encounter in this part of the game. Um, there's an ironic statement made by Herbert Dashwood in his terminal that states, you're not going to find one of these babies balancing on a big rubber ball, though. I can tell you that much, which seems to be exactly what Rezka likes to do. Also, Rezka is much larger than the average Yaogwai. Remember, we talked about uh, brown bears being larger than black bears. Towering over the lone wanderer when she ro rears up on her legs, she is 20% larger than a normal Yaogwai. All right, let's move on to the next one. We have Ghost of She. This one is crazy. All right, <laughs> we've, we've seen crazy things in Fallout before. This one is one of them. This is, th here, just listen to this. Katubiu. That is a sad story. I do not like to tell it, but if you are asking, it must be at White Bird's request. That I will honor. Long ago, a girl lived among this tribe. She was a curious child, and a clever one, and her mother had a devil's time watching over her. One day, the child slipped away from camp and went to play in the caves nearby. The girl did not know that a Yaogwai slept in that cave. The girl died. The tribe wept. For the girl had died before her naming day, and her ghost would remain restless and wandering upon the earth. Many hunters tried to kill the beast, but it eluded them or drove them off. The shaman said that since it had consumed the girl, the two were one. So we call the beast Ghost of She, for the child had no name to be called. That is the story of the Ghost of She. It is a sad story. It is our story. So that dialogue comes from Walking Cloud, and Walking Cloud is a character from the Honest Hearts, a DLC of Fallout New Vegas. And we get this crazy mythological explanation of who the Ghost of She is. And Ghost of She looks crazy. If you haven't played this, go play it, because you will see a Yaogwai on fire. This bear, this bear is on fire. Um, th this Yaogwai is an oversized variant with a flaming body. It has a phenomenal attack power, which can kill a heavily armored person in just a few blows. Well, yeah, if you're going to get hit by a fire bear, I hope it kills you. I mean, that don't only makes, I hope you don't die. I don't, don't die. I'm not, I'm not wishing your death. I'm just hoping that reality works in a way that makes sense. Um, <laughs> after taking long enough damage, it can create several doppelgangers of itself. Some of her strange physical characteristics may be a result of the courier being under the influence of the Detura derived drug. So that's a whole other issue. But maybe it's not really on fire. Maybe it's not really multiplying. Either way, it's crazy. This is a, this is a crazy bear. Be careful. Don't fight a fire rare if you can if you can help it. But I'm glad the one that showed up wasn't on fire. 
can go get one if you want me to. No, I don't. I don't want you to. Oh my god. All right. Let's uh, let's move on. In Fallout Four, we don't have anything. Well, I mean, we do have some varieties of different bears, right? Like as you level up, you come across stunted and shaggy and glowing and so on and so forth. There are some very specific types of bears that are only in the DLC. So the Yaogwai Ghoul is in Far Harbor, and Far Harbor also has the irradiated, irradiated, man, my words, irradiated Yaogwai. So Far Harbor gives us the more irradiated versions, including the one that turns into a ghoul. We also have the Pack Yaogwai. What is a Pack Yaogwai, you, you're asking me? The Pack Yaogwai is specifically the ones found in the cages in Nuka Town. There's this little backstage area with some cages. You remember this? And there's, they're kept by the pack. That's why they're called pack Yaogwai. Because, you know, some people like dogs, some people like cats or birds or fish. The pack like to keep gigantic mutated bears. Cool, right? All right, we've got one, well, two more. One more that turns into two more, I guess is a way to say it. We have Fluffy, Fluffy from Fallout 76. This is another reason to go play 76. And I, I just jumped back in yesterday for the birthday of Fallout 76, which is quickly getting up there in age. What is going on with the time? There is a quest line involving Fluffy. Fluffy is a dead mutated bear. Fluffy is also subject J12, a unique bear bovine combination created by Dr. Frank that lived in Appalachia before the Great War. So remember, I mentioned that we don't necessarily know where the Yaogwai come from and if they were created or they're most likely just irradiated bears. This one in particular is still a bear, but it's a hybrid with a bovine bear bovine combo and has the traits of looking like it has been mutated and dates back to the pre-war. So here, let's dig into this a little bit. Dr. Frank experimented with brain graft techniques, which he used on a rescued bear, combining its own with a bovine brain and glands. This experiment was a success, and Frank named the bear-bovine combination Fluffy. At first, Fluffy was docile and even allowed Frank to climb into its cage and pet it. However, Fluffy soon began to exhibit fits of rage, forcing Frank to reluctantly put a shock collar on the bear. Not long afterward, Fluffy escaped after the shock collar was ripped off. Fluffy subsequently became the prime subject in the deaths of two hikers. Frank reportedly acquired a sneak peek at the forensics report, confirming his fears that Fluffy had become irreparably violent. Frank began searching for Fluffy, and his investigation laid, led him to the Alpha site. James Cord, a U.S. Army soldier, Posing as a hillbilly to ward off unauthorized personnel, accosted Frank and warned him to leave, though he was unfazed and continued his search. Frank eventually found Fluffy's den, where the bear had made its home after escaping, and planned to sedate Fluffy for capture. Fluffy's corpse still lies in the den, filled with crossbow bolts, though the skeleton of Dr. Frank is also nearby. We can kind of gather what happened there, right? showing that both of them met their end as a result of this encounter. The son of Fluffy, however, still lives, now known as a Yaogwai. This is interesting, right? Like, did the bear get out and then it got irradiated? How did that work? If Dr. Frank was still alive, did this happen right at the time of the bombs dropping and then the bear gets out and then gets irradiated? Like, what is the actual time frame here? I don't know that we're sure about that. If you have more details about that, let me know. But the bear does appear to be wounded. You can actually, you can come across the corpse, but it also has those telltale signs of these, like, missing fur spots and uh, radiation damage on its skin. And chances are the corpse would have disintegrated by the time that you come across it in the game, which is almost three decades after the bombs dropped. So I guess the assumption is that Dr. Frank experimented on the bear, survived the onset of the Great War, continued, I guess, working with Fluffy until Fluffy gets out, and then sometime very recently to the opening of Fallout 76, this whole altercation happens. In the meantime, Fluffy's out living in the wild, becoming more irradiated. That seems to be the time frame that makes sense to me. 
then they both meet their doom together. In the meantime, Fluffy mates with some other bear or Yaogwai or something out in the in the world somewhere, and we get Son of Fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> the son of Fluffy is a unique Yaogwai in Appalachia. He is the child of Fluffy, a bear that was experimented on before the Great War by Dr. Frank. He can be encountered during the Unsolved Tracking Terror Quest. And basically, that's it. He looks a lot like Fluffy, except he's running around and he's very much alive. And you can fight him in order to do the, the quest. So that's it. Now... The bovine combination brain thing, I don't know how that plays into how this creature descended from the other one. Is it smarter? Is a bovine smarter than a bear? I don't think so. Does that mean that it acts differently? Not really. It still just acts like a big mutated bear. There are some quirks, though, or at least there is a quirk. Prior to patch 1.1.4.3, and this is for anybody I'm talking to who's played 76, you're going to be like, Oh, yeah, that's of course there was a weird thing that happened with that because there's a weird thing that happened with everything for a long time until they really patched everything out. So prior to that patch, the son of Fluffy could spawn as a legendary creature. This is unintentional and fixed in the patch. Yeah. Can you imagine doing this quest line as like a low level character just trying to like get through a bunch of side quests and things to level up? And then all of a sudden you're like, all right, track down this bear. Yagwise. Yeah, OK, tough, but I can I can fight Yagwai. Yeah, I've done that before. Oh, my God. Son of Fluffy, legendary creature. That makes me wonder. We have these gigantic monster, or at least these big boss creatures, right? You've got the Scorched Beast Queen. You've got Earl. Can we get a giant Son of Fluffy? That would be amazing. Like a really big bear. Like a, an enormous leap. Like a bear the size of a three-story house. That would be nuts. Can we do that? devs that would that would be awesome i know you got other stuff planned but maybe maybe just upsize a bear stick it somewhere on the map and have it just wander around that would be incredible all right <laughs> well that's what we got for yaogwai i hope you guys enjoyed the episode this week if you have any thoughts on any of this stuff any uh extra details things you want to chime in or would like to join us on the patreon or whatever you know how to get to all that stuff it's really not that hard but if you need some help just look in the notes underneath the this episode or Go to robotsradio.net where you can check out info about this show and all the other shows that I do and all the other shows on the network. Lots of awesome stuff, other fall stuff as well. Or join us on the Discord or on Twitter or wherever. We're all over the place. To plug into everything else we're doing, check out robotsradio.net. Reach out to me on Twitter at robots underscore radio. Check out the Robots Radio Rocket Club, where you can join me and a bunch of our other creators creating your podcast, starting a new podcast, or helping your current podcast grow. There's more information about that on robotsradio.net as well. And you can always talk with us and the entire community, over 2,000 people on the Robots Radio Discord. Come join us. We'd love to chat with you. See you guys next time.